प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह कंशाम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी हर बलवेद कंशाम महाराज the path maker to our liberation our dear guruji puja santo and all of you devotees jai swami narayan in life a householder has a mother and a father out of a mother and father a father plays a role of teaching guiding more on a side of muscular side we can say not too gentle more on a strict side and through one's father one understands and gets knowledge of the world and on the other side there's a mother a mother when one remembers one's mother the affection the gentle touch the kindness the compassion that one receives and one grows up with one is nurtured by is completely different one cannot ever forget this is the life of a householder but in satsang in the time of maharaj there was one particular saint an elite saint of bhagwan swami narayan that played the role of a mother he is none other than sadguru muktanand swami muktanand swami's life is something extra ordinary it's beyond one's comprehension it could be said that there has not been a saint even till this time that has lived such a life that is so gentle and kind and the next saint that reminds me of muktanand swami is our puja guru ji but our topic for today the title is satsang ni ma meaning the mother of satsang the story shares the uncommon selfless attitude of a mother in addition it reflects spiritual insight and practical knowledge through the observance of saintly disciplines made by god we want to take a look at the story of how Sadhguru Muktan Swami received this name Satsang Ni Ma the mother of satsang and how he became so you can say infamous in the eyes of devotees of the Swamiran sect until this time today we still remember him on and on and through his characteristics through his virtues we have an aim that one day we would like to reach such a spiritual state so on with the story today in the scorching heat of the summer the saints underwent an observance of vrats vrats meaning saints observed vrats which are niyams or it can be said that fast types of fasts like um dharna parna some of you have heard of this it's eating on one day and then the next day not eating 
continually is doing this on and off, on and off. Or Chandrayaan, taking eight balls of food, mixed food, just eight of them in one day, and doing this for one continuous month, daily. That's called Chandrayaan. Saints in that time, in the heat of the summer, were observing in Vrats. At that time, Sri Hari had ordered not to eat any items containing ghee or sugar. Bhagwan Swaminarayan tested his sadhus very much. He wanted his sadhus to be, you can say, nonetheless perfect. In the Vachnamrut, Gadadam, middle chapter 45, Bhagwan says that I do not want to even keep a tal matra kasar, meaning not even a sesame seed size fault in any of my followers. This is the kind of daya, compassion, Bhagwan Swamiyan bestowed upon his followers. And he says that he would like to make everyone like Muktanan Swami so that they would not be a they would not need to be taken care of. So, Sri Hari ordered not to eat any items containing ghee or sugar. Ghee meaning clarified butter. The saints strictly followed the commands of God. Once Muktanan Swami with a group of 50 sadhus were traveling in the Marwad region, Bayatmanan Swami was also with them. Bayatmanan Swami was also an elder saint of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and he had a strict observance of those as well. He followed very strictly the rules of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. It was a year of a great famine. Consequently, people in those villages were not kind or generous. Respected sadhus were insulted wherever they went, and they were welcomed only with abusing words and lots of trouble. They did acquire, they did acquire any food to eat for the past three days. The problem was that in that time, sadhus were insulted because of the uprising of the Swamran movement. Due to great, great spread and glory of the Swamran sect, there was many, many others who insulted Bhagavan Swaminarayan and his sadhus. If others who hated Bhagavan Swaminarayan and sadhus, if they saw him walking, they would come and beat them. And Bhagavan Swaminarayan and his sadhus had strict vows of not to do anything or retaliate back. They just took the beating. They just tolerated the pain because it was the command of Sri Hari. This was the affection they had. So f they were begging for alms, begging for food at that time. But for three days, they had not received a call. They had not received any kind of food. No one had said yes. The saints suffered from the heat of the sun outside and with the heat of the hunger from the inside. Muktan Swami was worried about the younger saints who had come with him. Four and a half days passed, yet no food. As the sun was about to set, a devout Brahman saw the group and saints group and saints and approached to meet Muktanan Swami. He experienced a great joy in his heart by merely observing the patience of uh, the, the patience of the saints. The Brahman felt himself fortunate to see them and he was inspired to serve the saints. He invited them to have dinner at his home. Muktan Swami was somewhat comforted comforted. Then he suggested to make only Kichri hodgepodge for all all the santos and without adding any kind of ghee the brahman was surprised because he had never seen such restrained and pious saints before so on the way there muktan swami and a group of saints were walking a brahman saw the saints and he had appreciated bhagwan swami and saints so he decided to welcome them and make Kichri, Muktan Swami explained to them that, you know, we're not eating any kind of ghee or sugar, so please make it without that. So the Brahman agreed and says, no problem. But on top of that, he received a good vibration, a good quality that I've never seen such kind of saints before who follow such kind of rules. 
It's very, very pleasing to see. Let's take a look what happens next. Quickly the Brahmin went home. The joy appeared on his face as if he had seen the manifest form of God. Meanwhile, the Kichari was prepared. The Brahman offered the Thar to Bhagwan and mixed only two spoons of ghee inside for Thar. Meaning, for Bhagwan, obviously it's not an exception that even Bhagwan has to suffer, you can say, by not consuming ghee. So only for Bhagwan's Thar, the Brahman offered two spoons, two small spoons inside the Thar for Bhagwan. Muktan Swami and the saints arrived to the Brahmin's home. The Brahmin greeted them with sandalwood paste and kumkum and performed their pujan and made prepar preparations for dinner. The saints had eaten nothing for the last four days and now the time had come to consume a warm meal. Bhayatman Swami, who was one of the senior saints, asked, O Budev, have you mixed ghee in the kitri? Swami asked, just to make sure, double, double check that, that n no rules were broken. Swami, not for you, but only for God. I had mixed two spoons of ghee, and it was mixed in with the rest of the kichari. The Brahman replied with joy. On listening to this, Bhayatman and Swami said, The kichari contains ghee, therefore we cannot consume it. Per the directions of Sri Hari, he stood up immediately. After offering Thar to Bhagwan, obviously when 50 saints come, there's going to be a big, big kettle that's going to be put to make the Kichri. The Thar is just a small dish offered to Bhagwan. And then what the Brahman did was he took just the Kichri, which had two spoons of ghee that was offered to Bhagwan, and he placed it inside with the big pot, mixed it in. So everything became prasadil. One thing that we can learn from this is that number one, we should offer tar to Bhagwan. Anything that we consume, we should first offer it to Bhagwan. Even if it's a small piece of candy, we should offer it to the idol of Bhagwan and then consume it. Our Puja Guruji says in his katha that I have never consumed anything in my whole life without offering to Bhagwan. Even at such a young age, when he came to the understanding of maybe five or, or six I've never offered or I have never eaten anything that has not been offered to Takoji first it's just a rule and by offering it to Bhagwan it becomes Nirgun it won't have an effect on our mind but if we all directly eat it you can see the people of the world who eat outside food which is first and foremost made by unholy people and then off of that we directly consume it. What does that make our mind do? Has or we develop wicked thoughts. We develop thoughts that are not satsang related. Due to that, we cannot worship Bhagwan. So that's the problem. We have to offer anything we first and foremost not to eat outside, but whatever we do consume that's homemade, we offer it in thar. The second rule is that Obviously, there's two or three or four pots on your stove. If you do not do this, please tell your mother or father, whoever prepares the food, that after offering it, after offering the tart to Bhagwan, and after Bhagwan has partaken in it, one has to take the tart and one has to mix each and everything to make everything prasadil. One cannot just consume start to eat from the pots directly without mixing the the prasad that Bhagwan has taken into the food. So the Brahman, obviously as per the rule, took the thari and mixed it. Bhaidman Swami found out and immediately became, you can say, alert. He said, no one eat the food. It contains ghee. Do not eat the food. He stood up immediately. All the other saints felt the same way, leaving the Brahman perplexed. The Brahman could not believe it. He said, I did not add ghee to the kichri, just two spoons to Bhagwan's thar. I cannot believe it. Sadhguru Muktan Swami thought. Now, let's see how Muktan Swami took his role, you can say as a mother, took his place, took his seat in the very position how 
and now we call him Satsang Nima. How did he do it? It was not appropriate to break the heart of neither the Brahman or the striving saints. He tried to convince Bhayatman and Swami, but to no avail. The Brahman was anxious. How is my trouble, how is my terrible fate that today I am unable to give food to such pious saints in my home? Muktan Swami took pity upon the saints and the Brahman. He protested, O saints, today while remembering God, consume kichri prepared by this devotee. I will be responsible for any consequence of violating the command of Sri Hari. Muktan Swami took it upon himself seeing that the saints had not eaten for four and a half days and seeing that the Brahman would be depressed and would not would not be joyed of Santos eating or consuming food and even might think that you know I do not want to become a devotee of Bhagavan Swami and seeing all these kinds of you can say reactions that may take place in the future Muktan Swami said he solved two problems in one solution. He said, All the santos eat, I will take your blame, and also eat on behalf of this Brahman. So he also received the pun, the merits of all of you partaking in this prasad. With these words, all the saints, sadhus, and Brahman became extremely pleased. The saints uttered only, He is a kind of true mother that no one can compare to. And so they completed dinner. Muktan Swami had taken prasad as well, but Bhayatman Swami did not eat. Bhayatman Swami was such a strict follower of Bhagwan Swami Narayan that even if such an elite saint like Muktanand Swami said, he did not partake because he remembered the words of Maharaj that Maharaj has said no to ghee. But Muktan Swami was a practical sadhu. He understood at what circumstances and what kind of situations how he should deal with the Agna of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. He understood that four and a half days Bhagwan Sadhus had not eaten. Due to that, obviously, first and foremost, fatigue. Secondly, obviously their body has not received nutrition. Due to that, their mind also becomes wavered all these different factors but Bhayatman Swami had a different feeling he said I don't want to eat the next day Bhayatman Swami took the way of Gadpur meaning he decided to leave on his own to go back to Gadpur to meet Maharaj Maharaj considered him a guru and also revered him as a great saint as Bhayatman Swami approached Gadpur he complained against Muktan Swami's revolting move to Shri Hari. Meaning he complained to Muktan Swami that Maharaj, you have commanded us not to eat ghee or sugar. Muktan Swami, knowing that there is ghee in the kichri, told all the santos to consume it and also he consumed it himself. But I, I followed your rule. I did not eat at all. Not even one, not even one spoon of this kichri. Sri Hari said, let them come. I will meet them. Muktan Swami came back to Gadpur. He performed Dhanur to Sri Hari and said, Maharaj, I am guilty as I have disobeyed your command. But the saints did not disobey you. So instead of these saints, bear all the consequences on me. Take the blame. Put all the, put all the blame on me. I will take the punishment. Swami, what offense have you committed? Sri Hari asked. Muktan Swami related the whole incident. On hearing this, tears dropped from the eyes of Sri Hari. Sri Hari got up from his seat and embraced Muktan and Swami. All the saints, including Bhayatman and Swami, looked on with astonishment. Bhayatman, Bhayatman and Swami could not believe his eyes that what is happening in front that what how why is Sri Hari hugging Muktan Swami and why is he crying Sri Hari uttered 
Swami, in fact, you are a broad-minded saint. All of your decisions are in accord, accord with my will. You have not only confronted the saints, but nurtured the Brahmin's spiritual conscien consciousness as well. Therefore, Swami, you are the mother of satsang. And this whole fellowship, which comprises of saints, brahmacharis, parsads, and devotees, you are a true mother. Such loving words bestowed the title of Muktan and Swami, uh, Satsangi Ma to Muktan and Swami, and the saints raised great acclaim with constant clapping while Sri Hari was embracing Muktan and Swami. This is the story of how Muktan and Swami got the title Satsangi Ma. Nonetheless, there's numerous, numerous stories and events in his life of how his sympathetic attitude his compassion, compassionate attitude has changed the lives of many and also have established a type of you can say personality a chop you can say an impression in the hearts of those who have experienced this sympathetic attitude another story The title of this story is, Is There Any Food to Eat? Sri Hari had ordered many small sadhus to learn Sanskrit scriptures from Muktanand Swami, who tirelessly nurse, nur, nursed the sadhus with care and patience. One day, while a few saints were reading at night, they became quite hungry, so they sneaked their way into the kitchen without be, being seen by Muktanand Swami. They found a few rotlas, meaning a loaf of bread made from millet and buttermilk. At that time, Muktan Swami thought that the sadhus are studying with great endeavor. So let me go there and relieve them for some time. Meaning at that time, Bhagwan Swami had commanded his sadhus to learn the language of Sanskrit. This language of Sanskrit is the language of gods, you can say. Deities and gods know this language. It is spoken in the realms above. Don't worry. If you go to Akshardham, Bhagwan will speak whatever you want to, or whatever you speak and whatever you understand. There is no limitation, but it is said that the language of Sanskrit is the language of the gods. So, Muktan Swami was teaching these santos, and at that time he had gone off, and the santos were studying, and it became late night but they became hungry. So they sneaked off in the kitchen because they would know that Muktan Swami is there and it was past midnight. So you have to take a shower, you have to do puja, and, and then you can again consume something partaken by Bhagwan himself and then yourself. So Muktan Swami, he wanted to check again Let's see what, how the saints are doing. Let's, you know, let me freshen them up a little bit. So he went there. Let's see what happens. To his surprise, there was no one there in the room. Muktan Swami looked around and could not find any santos. At last, he walked towards the kitchen in hope of finding them there. As the saints saw Muktan Swami coming, they stopped for a moment, felt ashamed, tried to conceal the food. Muktan Swami took pity on them. He went to them and asked, My dear saints, I am very hungry. Is there any food? Now in reality, Muktan Swami was not hungry at all. In reality, he exactly examined the situation and he knew that the santos were hungry. But at that time, if he had, become an, if he had became angry and said, Why are you eating at this time? You're supposed to be studying. You're breaking Bhagwan's rule. Then all the santos, you can say, power, willpower would be broken. And they would not want to study anymore. These kinds of, you can say, situations would occur. But Muktan Swami took a different approach, a m approach of a mother. He said, my dear saints, is there any food? I'm hungry. Let's see what let's let's see what happens next. By hearing such 
a statement from Muktan Swami, the saints rejoiced and said, Yes, Guru Maharaj. A sadhu brought rotlas for Muktan Swami and served him. Muktan Swami said, I do not feel happy eating by myself, so all of you should take something as well. He knew, Muktan Swami knew that the santos wanted to consume, but obviously at first they served him. And due to the respect, Swami said, you should all sit with me as well. I, don't want, I do not want to sit alone. He served the rotlas to the saints. Muktan Swami got up, took a rotla, and like a mother would serve his child, Muktan Swami served each and every sadhu that was in the kitchen a rotla. Think about it. Such kind of a motherly attitude. Such kind of sympathy. And I, I can guarantee that those sadhus, after witnessing this whole incident, never forgot that in their life. Because how can one forget motherly love? And Muktan Swami was the idol of motherly love. He did not forget at all. They could not forget at all. They would probably remember it constantly. And when they had to go far from Muktan Swami, Due to the due to the Agna of Bhagwan, I'm sure, I'm sure they remembered that time. I'm sure that they cried over Muktan Swami's compassion, his sympathy. Such kind of a sadhu left impression, left an impression in the hearts of those who saw him, those who witnessed him, those who experienced him. So he served the road loss of the sadhus, relieving their relieving them from anxiety. At last, he took only half a rotlo and began to eat. Although Muktan Swami is not hungry, he consumed some food for the sake of pleasing the sadhus. Such kind of a role Swami played. And due to this, he was considered the satsang, satsang ni ma. And not only that, but his life was more of a he didn't show too much uh, you can say phenomenon or too much uh, you can say uh, illustrated too many powers like Sat, like Sadhguru Gopan Swami did but he was the one who took care of sadhus he would see if a sadhu is falling back from satsang thinking and wanting to depart he was such a sadhu that would pick that sadhu up from his position and elevate him to such a spiritual state that he would become one with Bhagwan. This was his, you can say, nature, personality, persona, his whole existence, his whole being was more for a support instead of anything else. So there is another story that proves and shows this whole point of how he helped other sadhus by keeping them on the path of Bhagwan. The story's name is Your Shelter is My Home. Once upon a time, Muktan Swami was staying in Surat with, with 70 sadhus. A small sadhu, out of affection for his parents, thought, My parents are not devotees of God. Let me go to instruct them to worship God. So a sadhu, after leaving his whole household life behind, had a thought that, let me go and, you know, see what my parents are doing. I have pity upon them. The small sadhu decided to leave by taking permission from Muktan and Swami. When he shared his thoughts with Puja Swami, Swami warmly said, O sadhu, you thought, well, but devotees have maintained comforts of food, water, and shelter for 70 saints. And if you will leave now, what will the devotees think? Also, people in the city will talk about your absence and will criticize Lord Swaminarayan as well. Therefore, it would be better for you to leave while returning to Gadara. The sadhu became convinced by hearing such thoughts from the mouth of Muktan Swami. Muktan Swami did not say no at that time. 
He didn't say. He was very, very smart. You can say brilliant. Where he did not say no. That no, you cannot leave. This is Swamiran said, what will everything, everyone think? He said, Sadhu, just think about it. All these devotees have prepared accommodations and food for all 70 sadhus. And what will they think if one of them left? What will the people think? And what will they talk about Bhagavan Swaminar? Instead, when we go off on the way of Gadpur, your village comes near, I know. You can leave then, on that time. No problem. Swami, Swami, Swami's initial move was for him to obviously stay. His intent was that, that he stays. But he wanted to do it in such a way that the sadhu's heart would not be broken and also his whole, you can say, plan would work successfully. Let's see what happens next. Thereafter, through Muktan Swami's discourses, the small sadhu's thought changed and he determined to serve Muktan Swami till the end of his life. Swami did katha. After knowing his thought until their descent from Surat, Swami did katha for that time being. And in that katha, he talked about the glory of God. In that katha, he talked about the glory of a sadhu, the maima of the Swamiran sect, the association of the Akantik Satpurush. And due to that, the sadhu's thoughts changed. And they decided to stay in satsang forever with Muktan Swami. A few days later, Muktan Swami and other saints departed from Surat towards Gadara. On the way, Muktan Swami asked the sadhu, Swami, this is the way that goes towards your village. You may go if you like. So Swami, seeing that he knew that the sadhu's mind had changed, but just to check, just to test, while on their way there, the sadhu's, you can say, previous village that he used to live in came. So Muktan Swami said, Sadhu, your village is here. Go. You can go. You are free to go. The Sadhu folded his hands and with tears coming down from his eyes, he requested Swami, through your discourses, I have recognized that the attachment of worldly relations as the poison of a snake. O compassionate one, please make me your servant. I do not want to go back. From now on, your shelter is my home. Swami changed his thoughts through his discourses. And at the end, the sadhu did not want to go. The sadhu decided to stay. All due to Muktan Swami's mother-like, compassionate nature. There has been many, many saints in the Swaminarayan sect. But out of them, Sadhguru Muktan Swami's role is completely different from all the others. From these stories you have heard, you are able to understand that Swami's role was like a mother. Not only that, but due to his nature, many, many saints were saved and w excelled on the path of liberation and due to that they attained God we should all remember Sadhguru Muktan Swami for he has given us the gift of our Puja Guruji and in the same exact way you can see today that our Puja Guruji is also compassionate is like a mother has daya and has always taken care of his sadhus and his devotees and followers in such a way that they excel on the path of liberation Kansham Maharaj Jai